This video is brought to you by Squarespace. In this video, I'm going to share with you some shocking things about childbirth in Japan. So I'm back with another video, this one a little bit different than what we usually do on this channel but as a lot of you know, I recently had a baby boy so I wanted to share this experience with you because it totally had me surprised about all the different things that I do here in Japan, especially me coming from a western country, the US. But in order for me to do that, I need to bring in some special guests. Hey! Hello! Oh. <laughs> Say hello to everyone. Hi, <laughs> What's that? It's Mike. Oh, he's really into the mic right now. If you guys actually want to see what we're doing on the daily, if you guys want to see, you know, what's happening in our regular lives, either check out our Instagram account, Tokyo Zebra, or check out our YouTube channel. Right, Wolfie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a hug before you go. Johnny. <laughs> His uh, lips are big today. <laughs> all right. How is he? Good? Yeah, I miss okay. him already. Oh, also, before we start, if you guys want to see what we're doing on the daily, check out our Instagram accounts. And if you want to help support the channel, check out the Japan merch. Finally, if you guys have any questions, check out the Discord community right there. So the first thing uh, that was really surprising about Japan is painless birth. And the fact is like in the US, they actually don't even call it painless birth, they call it epidurals. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, yeah, but in I Japan they call it painless, painless, <laughs> painless birth, we right? We call it mutsubume in yeah. Japan. I was surprised that it's not very common here mm. in Japan. I think from like statistics, it's about 5.3% of yeah. all women giving birth in Japan use it. So it's very, very low. I can count the girls who had a the mutsubu men. Yeah. Most of the girls use regular, I mean natural birth. A lot of the, the doctors in the community say that childbirth and like experiencing the pain is kind of like a natural part of becoming a mother so mm. that they want to like have the woman experience yeah. that. Also, a lot of like doctors think that childbirth is not actually a like medical operation and they don't think that you should use medicine in order to give birth. It should be something natural. So that's why they don't have this painless birth. People in Japan basically believe that having the pain will make you a mother. And it's interesting because like since it's not really practiced here in Japan, there's not a lot of like a lot of the hospitals you go to mm -hmm. won't even offer it. So I think in Tokyo alone, there's only about 56 hospitals or clinics that offer yep. painless childbirth, right? Yep. Yep. So it's like very very difficult and for us living like in the center of Tokyo mm -hmm. there was only about like five places that we could go to like that um, was like in commuting distance yeah like even like the, all those five they don't all offer 24 hour service yeah. for the Mitsubu men because there's like a limited number of doctor who does the masui anesthesiologist that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so they have a limited number of them, so they don't offer that at night or right. on weekend. If you have contraction yeah. on either of those times, you're pretty much, you know, screwed. Yeah. So I had to choose the one that mm. offer 24 hours, which yeah. was just two for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, since the hospitals with those Mitsubu men are limited, mm -hmm. um, the beds are limited, right? Yeah. So you have to book it right when you find out that you're pregnant. So yeah. when we were like, when was that, like five weeks? Like right when you found out that you were yeah, pregnant. Uh, yeah, I was pregnant and I had this like letter that says I'm pregnant. Yeah. I had to make a phone call. I'm only five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> To book the bed. I felt like it was like you applying to college or something where you're like, well, like, well, are we gonna get in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then like I actually get rejected. It's really, really, really competitive. Yeah. So that's the first thing that was surprising. Another thing that's surprising, I think a lot of people were surprised also that are watching our vlog, you know, on our mm -hmm. Tokyo Zebra channel is that the stay is actually uh, quite long. Yeah. Um, it's actually like about five to seven days on average here in Japan. Mm. Yeah, in my case, it was four days after giving birth, one day before because it was the planned delivery. So you said six days, five nights. Six days, five nights, yeah. So I was actually quite surprised with like the total length, but then I was actually also kind of surprised at how much it really costs here mm. in Japan. In the States, it's actually quite expensive and then some other Western countries, mm -hmm. but from what I hear, like in other European countries, it's actually free. Yeah. Um, I think Canada yeah, is also 
free. Mm -hmm. Here in Japan, you actually end up paying about 500,000 to about a little over a million yen. Yep. But you also do get some government assistance, but that really depends on which ward you live in, right? Mm -hmm. Well, some ward offers like additional support, like Shibuyaku <clears throat> and Minatoku as far as I know. Yeah. They offer Juman or Nijuman, so that's like a little bit extra. But like that's a rare case, I think. In our case, we ended up spending about childbirth itself. It was about 1.1 million yen. Mm -hmm. And then we had about 520,000 yen in from, government. from the government. So roughly we paid around 600,000 yen, which is like roughly around $5,000 to give childbirth. So for the six days, that's actually pretty good. Like they took care of you. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that were kind of interesting is like, it's not actually your regular stay, which also kind of blew me away. Um, you also actually had a welcome pack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When you book the stay or the yeah. bed, I got this little piece of paper. Basically tells you like, so this is what we offer you, like a gift bag. And this is what you need to bring. So the things they offered are pads, basset, hair dryer, breastfeeding pillow, bath towel, baby clothes, diapers, and wipes. Basically what you need to take care of the baby and just like live normally. It almost sounds like you're checking into a hotel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you basically don't really need to bring anything. In, in my case. Yeah. But our hospital was like a, kind of like a smaller, like personal clinic. And if you go to a bigger, like a giant hospitals, yeah. they offer less stuff. So you actually have to bring a lot of stuff. Before I continue, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. This year has been ultra crazy with a new baby and everything else going on in the world. So their support has made all the difference for me and my new family. If you guys don't already know from all of my other videos, Squarespace is a go-to spot to build your online presence. Squarespace has uniquely awesome templates making it easy to start. And better yet, they have some pretty awesome tools to help you along the way. For example, they have portfolios and galleries to display all of your projects. And Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to tell your story, share your updates, photos, and videos. And if you're an analytics nerd like me, you can see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time, helping you to build a better website as you go. So head to squarespace.com today for your free trial and when you're ready to check out go to squarespace.com forward slash paolo from tokyo and get 10 percent off your first domain or website and something that's pretty comforting when going and like staying there is they actually give the mothers classes or they provide or offer these classes to them so you go in not only just to give birth but you actually learn like how to take care of your baby mm -hmm. i think that hospital stay actually is the time to learn like that's mm -hmm. what hospital like you know, prepares for the mothers. Yeah. So they have really good classes with other mothers, like yeah. breastfeeding, how to put the baby in the bath, and what you should be worrying about after the hospital stay. It's like all of the mothers that are having babies at the same mm -hmm. time will get together, you know, at certain times during the day with the nurses, and then they'll like teach you all the different things yeah. that you need to do. And if you have any questions, for example, you know, what color should the poop be? How much are you supposed to be breastfeeding? How do I change? diapers like how to cut nails like all of the questions mm. like mothers would have they have all of them in one group so that they can ask the questions together and you know learn all at the same time unfortunately because of the quarantine um, the classes yeah she couldn't it's canceled actually, they she couldn't yeah it got canceled yeah unfortunately but they did give you like at least one class right it's it wasn't much of a class like but a it was like a lecture <laughs> oh lecture. Yeah, yeah just for the um the bath bathing yeah um the nurse just showed me how to bathe a baby. But I also got this little booklet. This was the um, material for yeah. the um, classes that I was supposed to take. It actually has this, like how to bathe a baby and what you should prepare for the bath. And also all about baby's health. So you have like an instruction manual yeah, 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 yeah. for how to raise your baby. Since I couldn't get the class, uh, the nurse actually came to my room and like she actually went over everything. Yeah. Yeah, so that was actually nice. Yeah, so it's like mm. instead of having, you know, like a group class, you got like mm. a private class. Yeah, or I private got a private lesson. class. And then there was some stuff that was kind of specific to our clinic that were also pretty surprising. I've heard some stories about like how hard it is right after pregnancy here in Japan and like also in the States how hard it is but like this specific hospital like really focused on recovery mm -hmm. right um yeah. they really wanted to make sure that the mother was properly taken care of so for example uh if she got tired like at night or wanted to get some sleep they would actually take our baby 
and take care of him、mm-hmm. so that she can get some sleep. Yeah. Right after giving birth, you are exhausted. If you have experience, you probably、yeah. know your butt hurts, your like body hurts, and everything hurts,、yeah. and you're sleepy. Yeah. So it actually helped a lot. So in any hospitals in、yeah. Japan, they're either、uh, focused on like mother's body recovery,、yeah. like my hospital, or focus on the breastfeeding. So if your hospital is focused on the breastfeeding, they're gonna be focusing on like getting your breast milk work. Working. Well, working before your mother's body recovery. So、yeah. basically, it's hard to get asleep. That's why I chose the one that's focused on mother's body recovery.、Yeah. But like, unfortunately, since you know, they don't really teach you much of the breastfeeding,、yeah. my breast wasn't working until like, when I was leaving the hospital. There are merits and there are merits on each one. So, pretty much in Japan, you get to choose whether you want to focus on breastfeeding、yeah. and like, getting your breast to work. Right away, and like you want to focus on that, or if you want to have some time to recover, which is it's pretty nice, you get to actually、mm. choose. And then another thing that just completely blew me away, and I wish I was actually there because <laughs> the food looked amazing. <laughs> I really wanted you to be there. Yeah, because I wanted to share with you. <laughs> yeah, because you know she couldn't finish it. I could yeah, eat I could some of it. it. <laughs> But I mean, first of all, look at some of this food that she got. This was right after she gave birth. This is a waisen, which means like celebration meal.、Mm-hmm. Uh, you get a, like a really nice meal after the delivery. It's like、Japan. the we did it. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what I got. Yeah. I got a steak and some kind of fish meal, a fried scallop. Wait, no, is that a blueberry? It's a blueberry Blue cheesecake. Look at that. And, and some kind of soup. Oh, and look at that. You even got some wine. Yes. That's like your first wine in, you know, what? Like a year? year? I wasn't even sure if I was able to drink wine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was supposed to be breastfeeding, but I guess it's like a little bit like I can drink it in like a second. But still, they <laughs> but gave you, still, you, still, yes, gave that you was, some wine. Yeah, that was big. Like, let me know if that <laughs> happens in your country or, in fact, let us know that if, if there's anything that you guys do that's different or that just Shocked you as well? Like, let us know in the comments. This is the lunch I got the next day. The second day. I got the chicken steak, lots of veggie salad. Oh, I love chicken steak. It was, it was really good. And then I got fish. You know, like, this place is really focused on meal,、yeah. very nutritious meal. And they always come s with two main dish. <laughs> it's really hard to finish everything. Yeah. yeah. But it's nice that you get to, you know, you always have options. All the、yeah. more reason why I should have been there. I know, right?、Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Japanese like, hospitals, if you don't go to this one, they do also have pretty good food, like pretty decent food.、Mm, so. It's not like terrible.、So、I hear some horrible stories from other countries, but、mm. you know, in, in general, Japan has pretty good food. I think this place, especially, was shocking. Like, I mean,、yeah. look at that food. This is the second dinner. Oh, this scallop was so good. I got the giant scallop with really garlicky lemony sauce. Mm. Bowl of salad, pork cutlet, I think. Yeah, pork cutlet. And vegetable soup. That's the dessert. Oh, this steak was so good. That's the. Wow, you got some fish. Like roasted had... beef. Roast beef steak. And, and yeah, carpaccio. Carpaccio. And then you got a baked cake. Yeah, yeah. So, and this is the breakfast. The next day. Oh, those are thick bacon. Those are large pieces of bacon. That was really good. Oh, wow. What else? Okay, so. There's a, there's a lot more. Oh, and the, this is the Japanese style dinner that I really liked. Oh, you yeah. got tempura yeah, as、I、well? Got, it's a lot too. <laughs> it's like a vegetable tempura. I got fish, nikujaga, and miso soup. Wow, that's super Japanese. Yeah. Also, Japanese style breakfast. Oh, so you got like porridge,、yeah. you got some fish, you got some cuts of fruit in there, you got some tofu. Tofu, got some miso it's soup. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it looks like tofu. And I got mozuku, tororo, and lots of veggies. She got a lot of meals.、Yeah. I wish I was there. Yeah, so that's another thing that is super, super shocking that you know, your meals were that good. I don't、yeah. know, maybe not shocking to you guys, but pretty、uh, shocking. So, eh, maybe you guys have that, or even better ones.、Yeah. <laughs> and then she, she finally left. 
And they actually gave her gifts, you know? Like for Yeah. I thought it was like pretty cool that they did. It was did. a sample bag. I know, but still, like they gave you stuff yeah, on yeah, your way home. True. She got like diapers, she got formula, she had um what else? She got wipes. She got wipes, she got soap. And then they even gave you like I think as a present, like a real yeah, present. That was a nice present. They they, the they gave you like a huge, like nice fluffy towel, you know, for the baby. Mm, you it's really good quality too. Yeah. You also got like a little box for his uh, uh, umbilical cord. Ne? Yeah. Unfortunately, we lost his umbilical cord. Sorry, Wolfie. <laughs> Sorry, Wolfie. <laughs> like the last thing that was super surprising um, was on our way out. I kind of knew this because I like I asked in, in advance. But in Tokyo, when you take the baby home, we don't have a car. That's why we did take a taxi, and we didn't have to use a car seat. If you watched our vlogs on our Tokyo Zebra channel, then you'll notice that like we came home, Michael had Wolfie in her arms, and that's how we rode back home. And a lot of people commented and said, hey, why isn't there a baby seat or why aren't you putting in a baby seat? It was surprising to me that it wasn't required, but in Tokyo, if you don't drive home or you don't drive your own car and you ride a taxi or public transportation, you don't have to use a baby seat for infants or, or babies or anything. So um, anywhere we go in Tokyo, we don't have to wear it. It's a bit scary though, if you think of the accident. I think a lot of parents living in Tokyo, they don't plan on mm, driving because you know, so a lot of people don't have cars anyway yeah. so it's like a one-off thing mm. and just to buy a baby seat mm -hmm. for that one time then it's kind of so, yeah. yeah yeah so that's <laughs> basically it if you guys like this video help us out hit that like button Smash. and if you want to see more content about japan japan guides or day in the life videos hit that subscribe button and the bell button and we'll catch you guys in the, the next, next one, one.